Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to share something that might be a controversial topic, um, and also I think it's really important to talk about, especially where we are in the, as a collective right now, and this is how women can create safety for men emotionally. Um, a lot of times I'm talking about it the other direction where how women, how men can create safety for women. And I think that's something that's really important and something that's very close to my heart. Uh, and I've had a comment on one of the YouTube videos that I made, one of the podcasts I made, where someone brought up the other perspective. And I thought, wow, I have not been sharing about this or thinking about this so I really sat with it for a while and I like allowed it to percolate in my psyche and also talk to a bunch of my friends that I resonate with what they their feelings and thoughts on these things and I have a lot of things to say so we're we're gonna dive right in um just so you know I'm reporting live from LA I'm really loving the energy here uh, a lot of things I can share about that later in the podcast but if you see in the reflection of my friend's villa um and it's really beautiful here. Like a hot tub, villa, little thing happening. We're gonna take mushrooms later. Life is great. <laughs> Life is abundant, great, and connected. Okay, so the, the comment, I'm gonna read it, that this woman wrote. Uh, she said that she talked to a men's coach, a friend of hers that is a men's coach, and he said that men do not feel safe to connect to their emotions and open their heart because of a lot of social, um, uh, societal stuff and also lineage traumas societal trauma and lineage trauma um, as men have always been punished historically for sharing their emotions and also they fear um, they fear opening like up about their emotions because a lot of them feel that once they open the, this portal they won't be able to provide and go to work and focus on everything they need to do because they would be too hurt or emotionally chaotic so this woman was saying, like, she said that this made her think a lot because um, imagine if it's hard for us women to be vulnerable and feel safe to feel our feelings. It must be a lot harder for men because of, like, this trauma that this guy was talking about. Um, and they don't really even have the emotional tools a lot of times to connect to their, to their vulnerability. Um, and I was like, yeah, I resonate with that. I mean, uh, so... What it made me realize was that, like, basically, we as women, this is something, this is like a huge download for me, that, like, we as women have this opportunity, if we choose to take it, take it up, um, to, this is what I call, like, high priestess energy, and I'll go into what that means in a little bit, but basically, women who are connected to their emotions, that are connected to the spirit world. Um, we have this opportunity to be kind of these leaders for showing the way and holding the container for men that it's safe to be in their bodies and it's safe to feel their feelings and also kind of being the guidepost to how men can connect to the spirit world because traditionally the masculine energy is here to like hold the container in the physical realm which is really beautiful because um that's just like what they're made for traditionally and also uh, as women we are more traditionally i'm generalizing here but those who are leading in the feminine energy are more connected to the spirit world like we literally have the like I'm touching my womb right now because through our womb, we can literally create life. So we have this natural portal literally within us to connect to the spirit world because the spirit world is where all of us come from. Like this is where our souls come from. And being in high priestess energy means that we are connected to our bodies because through our bodies, we are connected to spirit. And if we are able to hold this container emotionally and spiritually for men that it's safe for them to drop into their bodies and it's safe for them to connect to their emotions and it's safe for them to connect to spirit um, and also um, that it's safe for them to connect to spirit while also not losing control of this 3d reality that we're currently in so like 
basically we can show them like, hey, it's okay to have your emotions and I can teach you some emotional tools and I can show you through my own embodiment that it's safe to feel your feelings in your body and basically you're not going to fall apart and you can still, you know, do everything you need to do in this world, in this 3D world and here's the balance in the middle. Because the point of all of us is to come into balance of our masculine and feminine energies inside of all of us. So each one of us, no matter if you lead in your feminine energy or you lead in your masculine energy, like for me, I'm a woman, so I'm choosing to lead. My soul chose for me to lead in my feminine energy in this timeline, but I still have, like in this lifetime, but I still have masculine energy inside of us, inside of myself, which helps me to go do everything I need to do in the 3D. Um, and so if we can show this for them, like if we can be this safe container for them, hey, it's okay, like you can feel your feelings, it's okay, here's some tools to connect to the spirit world, here's some tools to regulate your emotional reality, then it's going to, I believe, shift the entire collective. And it can actually shift the collective energy very quickly. Because us as women have for many thousands of years been very dominated by masculine energy uh, in a negative way, um, I feel that right now this is coming up collectively, this like healing process of the feminine, like, hey, this, was, this is not okay, this has been going on for thousands of years, we need to heal ourselves, we need to heal this within the collective. This is a very loud topic that's happening right now in society. And this has led to a lot of movements um, to kind of help shift this energy from a, you know, a masculine dominated society to more of a feminine integrated society. And the goal is to be balanced in the middle. And what I, I realize is that like usually one extreme bears another extreme initially to try and balance it out. So you see a lot of women right now who, you know, they have every right to be very angry at not just men, but like masculine energy, because traditionally this has been a negative thing in their life. Um, and I honor that. That was me at some point in my life. And also, I don't think that that is going to help heal the collective. It's part of the healing process. We need to honor every step of the way. And also those of us that have what I call high priestess energy, those of us that have been able to transmute this, we've been able to come into balance within ourselves of our masculine and feminine energy and we have the capacity to hold the container for not just ourselves but people beyond us you know like not just men but also women um and this is this is what i feel like i i really I, i've been meeting a lot of these women and this is like what i see is going to actually heal this this dynamic between the masculine and feminine energy um, this high priestess energy, these women that are so deeply connected to their bodies, they're so deeply connected, airplane, <laughs> they're so deeply connected to the divine, the source, source energy, God, whatever you want to call it, and they can like hold this container. Um, just going to pause for a minute for the airplane. Or I've been, there's been a lot of like police helicopters. I think this is like an LA thing. They just like to fly over everywhere, even in the nice neighborhoods. <sighs> One thing I don't miss <laughs> when I'm in Thailand. <laughs> um, and I look at my, so I look at my life, like my timeline, my lifetime as like an example of this because, you know, f for the first half of my life, I had a lot of trauma by men like my father and also men in the religion. Um, and I... I've been talking, so I, I hung out with my cousin Bowen last weekend in Portland, and he's like one year older than me, but energetically, he's like big brother vibes, and he's one of the few, he's one of the only family members that has kept up, like checked on me all the time over the years, just to make sure I was okay, just like this really beautiful, um, protective masculine energy, and um, we were, we were, I spent a couple days with him and his wife and it's the first time I hung out with him in like 15 years right so like we're like comparing stories because he also was raised in the religion he also left the Jehovah's Witness religion and um he still deals with a lot of fear of um that the kind of just like this undercurrent that like of belief that like is the world actually safe because when you're raised in a religion or in any sort of 
programming um, that feels very unsafe. Like the religion I was raised in is literally programming people to believe that the world's going to end at every moment. So it's kind of this brainwashing that like the world's going to end. So like um, give up all of the things that you care about and like don't take care of yourself. Don't save. Don't go to college. Don't go to university. It's just like survival mode and like fear. A lot of fear based decision making. And so he was saying to me, he's like, Brittany, you got out of this like well of like deep sadness with not just like the abuse of your dad and like sexual molestation of your na- from your neighbor, but also just the programming that we were raised in to believe, literally programming us to believe that the world is unsafe. And he's like, he was telling me, he's like, you're like a walking inspiration for me because he still is dealing with some of this. And I, I found it really interesting because he's a man, you know, like to, from, from the masculine perspective. And I was talking to his wife about it. She's also, um, shout out to Karen, like you're amazing and super high priestess energy and like divinely connected, like connected to source. And we were all talking and I was sharing with him that like, you know, I can understand why he has such a tight grip on needing to control his 3D reality and needing to make sure that he feels safe. And some of that comes with locking down and suppressing his emotional reality. Because when you're raised in an environment where one, you're programmed to believe that everything's unsafe and you literally have been brainwashed, to to get out of that is already a whole thing. But to get out of that and to be able to come to a point where you choose a belief system, you basically reprogram your brain uh, to have a baseline. Yeah, the world is safe and yeah, nothing matters, but we choose what matters and we can choose to make a positive impact in the in the earth while we're here in this lifetime. And I said to him, I'm like, I understand like as a man, you are you already like we're not given emotional tools on how to process this and also, you know, he's a really good husband and provider and he, he just is like, I, I, I grew up in such an unsafe, unstable, emotional environment and all I want is safety for myself and my wife and, you know, the, the people that he cares about. And so for him, the idea of allowing himself to feel more emotions and allowing himself to connect to the spirit world, it's like, it's almost like he's like, I don't want to open that box because it feels unsafe. And I told him, I really honor this. I honor that process. And also in honoring that process, I, I want him to know that it is safe, you know, but I, it's like, I can't just tell him like, Hey, it's safe. Like, it's okay. Drop in. You know, you have to like, you have to create, you have to create safety. You have to show on an embodiment level, like, look at how I live my life. It is safe. And I invite you to step into this embodiment and then step into this vibration. So I was just sharing with him a lot of my processes and it helped me to make this podcast because he's someone I really care about. We grew up in the same environment and also he's a man. And so I was like, wow, I wonder if this is even harder for men to go through this situation or go through a lot of these traumas because at least as women, we were encouraged or, you know, a lot of us weren't suppressed for feeling our emotions. We weren't made to feel shame for feeling our emotions. So if something traumatic happens we could process it like trauma happens when like a a negative thing happens like in your world that you can't process it's like so overwhelming for your body that you can't process it and you just kind of shut down and that energy doesn't go through your body it gets stuck in your body somewhere and it programs your body to do whatever it needs to do in order to make sure that thing doesn't happen again and so a lot of this is subconscious. It's just our body trying to keep us safe. And if you're not able to connect your body in a conscious way, and you're not able to have these emotional tools, there's like so many helicopters and airplanes, (laughs) Ah, just honoring it and keeping going. If you're not able to connect your body and feel safe, how do you process this stuff? So then it can feel like you're just kind of stuck in this emotional reality of whenever the trauma happened. And to me, that's really sad because life is meant to be lived in a way where we feel safe and we can thrive you know so I guess I just want to let you know like as a living example that I have gone through a very extreme form of trauma and brainwashing in my life and I've also chosen to um, acquire and attain the support you know like through therapy through psychedelics through soul family and, and also learned the emotional tools on, 
in order to hold a safe container for my own healing process. And in that, I have come to the point of abundance where now I can hold this container for you. I can hold it for the people in my life that I care about. I hold it when I coach people and when I hold host people on psychedelics. So like, this is the high priestess energy, you know? Um, and I really believe that like, I could have spent my life like hating men or feeling unsafe around men. Like I have countless examples of I could point at this thing and be like, yep, I don't trust men. You know, I, I, I'm going to write them off as a, as a species. <laughs> um, and instead I've chosen to heal this because also the masculine is part of me. So healing this uh, externally or healing this within myself is allowing me to attract in men into my life now that are very safe, that are very um, emotionally mature, very like able to go into spirit with me and like you know go on this journey with me. allow me to host them in their emotional reality allow me to be this high priestess energy and also um heal this within myself so that my own masculine energy is in balance because for many years i feel like i was denying parts of myself because they reminded me of the men that hurt me because I, like i said in the beginning like we all have masculine and feminine energy inside of us so I've chosen to learn from it and then use this knowledge to empower other people. Like the saying that I love, um, our biggest heartaches are the biggest gifts that we can give the world. If we can learn from them, heal from them, transmute them. And, just, and then that's like our biggest strengths. This is our superpowers, you know? So for me to go through all this trauma, I'm like, how can I turn this into a superpower? How can I help the world? How can I make the world a better place? And most people are not that conscious. They're like, they can't see, I always joke, they can't see beyond their own hand. Like they're looking at their hand and that's the only thing they can see like right in front of their face and they just can't see beyond that. And that's okay. Like, but I feel like those of you that are listening to this podcast and those that I interact with and I attract into my life, we have the capacity to hold space, not just for ourselves, but for the collective. And, but what I mean by that is you don't need to go and make a podcast. You don't need to go and like heal the whole world. But if you heal yourself and you heal the people that you love in your life, that is healing the whole world because energetically we're all connected on like a mass consciousness level. Energetically, we are all connected. So when you heal yourself and you heal the people you love in direct, direct proximity in your life, you are actively healing the whole world. So we all have this opportunity. So like I'm activating you, I'm inviting you, I'm activating you to look at this within yourselves and also to look at this within your, your family, your friend group, your relationships and do what you can, do your part to heal as much as you can. And I also want to say that like, to the women here that like healing this or even to the men because you're also part of like healing the collective masculine energy like even within each other like I was just talking to a friend that I'm staying with here in LA and he's saying that for most of his life he actually had a hard time being close to men and I was like what do you mean he's like yeah just this like fear of like toxic masculinity and like I saw all these like toxic traits in the men around me and I just didn't want to hang out with men I just loved women more because they're healthy they're safe they it feels good to be around them and I so for men and women I want to say that like healing this dynamic of like this masculine energy that wants to come home to its body your body all of us inside of us men and women it's not about how any specific man reacts so like say you're like going out and you're like I'm willing to hold the container I want to help you feel safe in your body it's not about how any specific man reacts it's more about us coming into a place of forgiveness within ourselves of the masculine energy that's happened in the world that has gone astray, you know? And it's like coming to this place of like, of like peace within ourselves that like the world is a safe place and we can feel safe in our bodies and we can, we can be around masculine men that are safe. Like this, like even just the idea that like safe men exist in the world for some people is a foreign concept. Like for a lot of women that I talk to and that I coach, they're like, I literally don't feel safe around any man. And I'm not talking a lot of times about physical safety. That is a thing. But like they're talking like emotional safety. And so a lot of women are running around like, 
hoping to find a man that is safe emotionally so that they can feel safe to be in their bodies and you know to be the the feminine yummy energy that makes everything feel like home when in reality <laughs> i find it interesting to realize that like us high priestess women us that have this capacity to hold a container we've healed ourselves enough to hold the container for the masculine to heal themselves we actually have the power if we choose to accept this mission to heal th this in the collective like instead of going around complaining that there isn't any good men out there you could you could use this as an opportunity to be a safe container for the men in your life like wow that is i just got goosebumps as i said that instead of complaining that there isn't any good men out there you could be doing the work for the collective to be a safe container for men to feel safe in their bodies emotionally and help give them the tools the emotional tools to s regulate themselves and also the tools to connect to spirit to connect to source to be this gateway for them this portal for them to come through and feel safe in their bodies connected to source god whatever you want to call it the universe and actively heal the whole collective the thing that we all want do you realize that you have this power do you realize that instead of complaining you could actually be healing the whole thing like that to me is so beautiful like i'm like is anyone listening do you hear this are you listening to this like what the fuck <laughs> so <laughs> i i want to share a personal story here because this i'm getting a lot of downloads like all the men that i meet on this journey to the states i know the universe has like definitely put them in in front of me even the guy that i'm staying with now like the way his name's reza the way that we met was I bicycled out at sun at Burning Man. I bicycled out at sunrise. Like the sun is coming up in the middle of the desert. There's this art car, which is basically like a huge semi truck that they put speakers on and made it beautiful and decorated. And people, there's a DJ up there da uh, playing and the, all these people are dancing, like a stage, like a mobile stage basically. And they take them out into deep in the desert and play magical tropical house music at sunrise. And so I, I was in my own flow. You know, I have a ton of friends at Burning Man, but I loved going in my own flow and going out on adventures by myself. So I woke up around six and like bicycled out and I'm just like all sparkly and glittery and dancing and like just having the best time. Like those moments where you're just like want to laugh and cry at once because you're just so excited to be alive and so grateful for the opportunity to exist in this world. <laughs> I was having one of those moments by myself and I, op I was had my eyes closed. I was dancing for a while and I opened my eyes and this guy is walking like by me and we make eye contact and then he stops and then he comes over and he like he comes and like dances we kind of had this like sensual dance. It wasn't sexual. We didn't kiss or anything. It was just like very close and intimate and very sensual. And we didn't talk for like 10 minutes. We just danced. And there's like thousands of people around us all just vibing and dancing and having the best time. And then we start talking and uh, we talk for like an hour in our own little bubble. Like I don't even know what time is really. You don't like phones don't work there. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but we had a really beautiful conversation and it was emotionally open. It was spiritually activating. And it was just beautiful. It was like one of these magical moments at Burning Man. And he said to me, he's like, I feel like you have an ancient soul. And I was like, yes, I do. Thank you for seeing me. And I felt like he had the same. Um, and we just connected. We ended up not seeing each other for the rest of Burning Man. We just had this one little dance. And he came to my camp and found like my camp, but I wasn't there. He wrote me a note. It's like very summer camp vibes at Burning Man because none of the phones work. So you're just trying to find each other in like 70,000 people. Um, we, I had given him my Instagram when we first met. And so he found me on Instagram. And after, after the burn, we connected and we just like became really good friends. And then he invited me to LA. So I'm, I'm here in his villa in LA right now. And he makes music for movies. He makes soundtracks for movies. He's a very amazing musician. Um, and he's just this example of like a very mature, safe masculine in my life. And also our connection is really activating for both of us what we need to heal within our within the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine. Because we call each other out a lot in a very positive way of like, or just like, you know, like we'll challenge each other. Like, do you really believe that is a healthy belief, you know? And just through the conversation with him, I've been able to realize a lot of things in my last relationship. 
and something I'm not sure I shared publicly yet, but um, in my last relationship, um, I was working out the kind of the final steps of me feeling safe in my body in this life. So um, in some ways, my last partnership created a lot of safety for me. Um, and in other ways, it created ex like physically in like the 3D world, it created a lot of safety for me. Emotionally, it created a lot of unsafety, it, not feeling safe. Um, and what I realized through, so in this conversation with Reza last night in the car, we were driving to a party and we were talking and I was like, oh my God, I have to write this down. So I like, pulled out my phone and like wrote this down and I'm going to share this with you because this is a huge download for me. Um, before getting in the relationship with my last partner, I didn't realize this, but on a subconscious level, I felt unsafe in the world. And a lot of women, I've talked to women about this. A lot of women just naturally have this thing where they just feel unsafe and they could be making all the money in the world. They could be, you know, like it doesn't really matter what it actually looks like in the 3D. It's just that they feel energetically unsafe in the world. And so what I realized last night in talking to Reza is that I, on a very deep level, felt like I needed a man or maybe not even just a man, but like the partnership, like the relationship. I was using the relationship of being in a partnership with, with a man to create the safety for myself. So this can be physical safety. This could be societal safety. This could be financial safety, whatever it was. Um, just, I, I felt like I needed to have a partnership in order to feel completely safe. And I had proven to myself over the last 10 years after leaving the cult that I was in, that I could create the safety for myself in many different ways. And yet I still felt that I needed a man to complete the puzzle. And when you need someone in a relationship, when you need anyone, if you need your partner, it is not a healthy relationship. That is codependency. There's something called codependency. I'll just define it if you don't know what it means. It means I need something from you in order to complete me or to help me feel safe. Um, I need it. Like I cannot give this to myself. So it, this could be financial, emotional, societal, physical, whatever it is. Um, there's a term in therapy that I learned called interdependence. And interdependence interdependence is the healthy version of this. This is what we actually want. And this is what the healthy relationships is, is I can provide for all of my needs. And yet it feels good to have this healthy interdependence with you. So I depend on you for things to give me things, but I don't need you to give them to me. I can give them to myself emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just that the relationship and this person, you're depending on them in a way that you feel safe and it feels healthy for you, but you don't need them in order to create that thing for you. Codependence is I need you. And when you're codependent on someone, which I feel like I have been in many of my relationships without realizing it, what happens is whenever they do something that threatens your safety in whatever way or the relationship, you react on a level that feels astronomically out of proportion to the situation because what's happening, so you'll basically you like freak out, right? In a way that like the situation might not look like it should, you should be freaking out on the surface, but it's because you're hitting a survival need deep below the surface subconsciously. So, uh, with my last partner, um, it was like, you know, he would do certain things and yeah, like looking back, those are things that I'm not okay with, right? Like, like breaking agreements in a relationship that, you know, we have agreements of how we're going to be open or whatever, but the, the, <laughs> the breaking them, like, yeah, that's painful. But like my reaction was like, my world was ending. Like I felt unsafe in the world until I did Cambo and I did some other psychedelics where I was able to come into my body. And also I had a therapist. I have a therapist on the island who is also a shaman and she's amazing. 
And these resources helped me to understand that I, I was using the relationship and my, and this man to create this safety for myself. And it just kind of like, there's these moments in your life where things just click like this, the light switch goes off. And I really believe those are like time track. Like you're on a, you're on a train and there's like a fork in the road and you just like, you just go and you like go to a new track. And that's how it felt for me. I was like, Oh, I don't have to live like this anymore. Like I don't need a partner. I don't need a man in my life. I actually am safe in the world. I have this connection to the universe that I've always had. I have a very strong connection to my body. I understand my intuition. I understand that it's my soul guiding me. And I don't need a man to create that safety for me. And when you don't need someone and you don't need like, so for me, I'll speak about myself. When I don't need a man to create safety for me, it very much tra- changes who I'm attracted to. It very much changes the vibration of the man that I'm attracting in my life. And it changes like the priorities of who I want to be with. And like pretty drastically, like I don't really want to admit that because it feels like, oh, was Brittany just manipulating things? It's like, no, but when you're in survival mode, well, maybe subconsciously you're manipulating. I, like, I have always acted as a caring, loving person in my relationships. And also I really honor that there was a lot of codependency in many of my past relationships. And on both sides, me and my whatever ex-partner, we would overreact to what was actually happening in the current situation because we were codependent with each other. We were relying on each other for different things. Um, and things that we felt that we couldn't give to ourselves. So another thing that I feel like I was using my past relationships for was um, because my family chose to disconnect from me. Like this is an example of like a, like a what I was being codependent of, right? Um, because my family disconnected from me 10 years ago when I left the religion I grew up in, like they just like, you know, Cut, cut me off right so uh, I've reconnected with a lot of them on this trip which is also timeline altering like lifetime changing right but back then and through all these past relationships I probably had like what I would consider seven major relationships in my life where we're like living together sharing finances traveling together a lot of times like have a business together um, I was using them as my replacement for my family So like everyone has this tribal need um, to like, it's like this survival need of like, it's it's very primal of all of us like growing up in tribes like thousands of years ago, where like your tribe is what creates safety for you. Like in back in the day, it was physical safety. And a lot of times today in our world, our family is what, yeah, it can create physical safety. You You can get financial help from your family. They can show up for you in different ways. But a lot of it nowadays is psychological safety it's emotional safety of like someone who's there for you they love you they're showing up for you in an emotionally supportive way and because I didn't have that with my family um, because they chose to disconnect from me I was connecting with my partners and I was attaching the survival need of tribe and family to them which one is like a super heavy thing to put on a person you just started dating and you're like trying to figure out if you want to have a life together. Like that's a lot. (laughs) So like I honor all these men that were like taking this on and also um, it's codependent, you know? So after the relationship with Andy, like the guy I dated before Fernie, the one who I built my community space with remote collective on the Island, um, I realized, Oh, this is what I was doing. So I consciously was starting to realize this. And I started building over the next two years before I started Dane Faraday, I started building what I call my soul family because I was like, I don't want to put this on my partner. I choose to have people in my life that are my chosen family and they show up for me as a tribe would. They show up for me as a healthy blood family would, you know, and I have built that. Like I had a lot of these people in my life before, but I like invested in them. I asked them consciously, verbally, will you be part of my chosen family, you know, and we make 
now we have the emotional reality like I have people in my life I call my godparents that are really like my parents you know we have a group chat they know everything that's going on in my life they know everyone I'm dating they know all the intimate details of my life and they are fully supportive of everything that's going on and they, they really are very protective over me and I have friends that I consider like my sisters and people that are like my big brothers or my little brothers you know so I just realized I don't really have any big sister vibes in my life and my big sister was really important for me growing up. I'm calling this in. Um, anyways, so so when you don't need someone for your safety, so this I'm back on track about like feeling safe, right? So when you don't need someone for your safety, it means you attract in someone in your life that you actually like just because you love hanging out with them. <laughs> like you actually love them just for who they are not because you need something from them. And again, I think a lot of us do this subconsciously. I'm not saying that we're out there like on the prowl, you know, like who can I rope into my life to meet my codependent needs? It's like, I don't think any of us are doing this in like a negative way. I think it's just a very natural thing. And if we were conscious about it, we would be able to one, heal it for ourselves and two, attract in the person that we actually want to build a life with not that we're trauma bonding with. If you don't know what trauma bonding is, it's like you have a trauma and someone else has a similar trauma and you're just like connecting through this trauma. But that's surviving, that's not thriving, you know? Um, and for me, it's like, I don't need anyone because like I know I'm directly connected to source. I am fully provided and taken care of by the universe, by God, source, whatever you want to call it. And so like, and I'm safe. I'm like, good. Like everything that comes into my life is abundance and love and everything that's happening for me. Like I really am in the knowingness these days, especially coming to the States. A lot of you have said like, wow, Brittany, you seem so much happier there. And yes, it's coming home and all these adventures. And also it's, I'm really using this as an opportunity for me to be fully in the knowingness that I am directly guided and protected by source, the universe, God. And it's, really working <laughs> and like like abundantly showing up in the 3d you know so um because I don't need a partner anymore uh the people that I have in my life are there like the people that are coming into my life it's like they're authentically flowing into my life because of a vibrational attraction and the vibrational attraction is this core vibration of I am safe the universe is safe we are all safe and we choose to make a positive impact in this world. And I'm, I know I can feel that when you hear this, that you're going to be like, what about the war? What about Trump? What about whatever, whatever? Because I'm in America and everyone's talking about the election here. And what I mean by that is like, yes, the, the world is doing whatever it's going to do. And also a lot of the world is doing whatever it's going to do because they're based on a belief system. They're, they're operating from a belief system of fear and scarcity and not feeling safe. So those of us that are shifting our vibration internally, we can actually affect the whole collective. We don't need to have the whole world wake up. We don't need to light up the whole grid. We just need each of us and our specific points in the world to light up and to choose this personal sovereignty and to choose this um, trusting in the universe and know in the knowingness that it's all working out. And like literally as a vibrational marker, we can affect everything around us more so than you even realize. You are fucking so much more powerful than you realize. Do you know this? Like when I do my meditations and I see like all of our energy, I can with my eyes closed, I can like see the energy in the world and I can see my own energy. And I'm just like, whoa, we are using like 10% of what we have the capacity energetically to because it's like it's not even us it's not an ego thing our bodies are vessels to allow source energy through so you don't even need to get in your head about it about like oh I'm not that special it's not it's like it's not even about you it's about you just becoming this clear channel for your soul to bring in all this abundance into your life to create beautiful things in the world to create a, a better world not just for us but for our children you know that's what I saw in ayahuasca is like we are at the very beginning of the age of Aquarius, which means like the vibration of the world, the actual planet is ascending and raising its vibration. We as a collective have the opportunity to raise our vibration. 
we're at the very beginning. We're going to look back when we come out of this timeline, when we come out of this lifetime, we're doing like our little soul review. We're going to be like, wow, that was so fucking amazing that I was there in the beginning and I had the opportunity to make a huge impact. You know, like when like the internet started and like those people and Microsoft and like all these like companies, they were at the very beginning. They were at the very beginning of changing the world in a very drastic way. We are there right now in the timeline and on a vibrational level. And so each one of us has the opportunity to affect the, the whole world and the future of this world in a bigger way than you realize in this moment. And it's okay if that's like too much to hold in your conscious reality. I just am trying to like activate you like on a soul level and like allow your soul to come through more and allow your body to like trust itself more because we need it. We need you. We need all of us to wake up and activate ourselves. Um, oh, okay, so um, this is an example of like, of what I was just talking about of like, being able to, as women hold this container for men. So the, the partner that I had before Faraday, Andy, uh, we built our community space together, right? And we grew up, we both grew up as Jehovah's Witnesses. So we had like literal trauma bonding. He grew up in England and I grew up in the States, but a very similar mentality. And we chose to transmute this and make it into something beautiful by building community. Like we were raised in a huge community and we chose to transmute all that pain into something really beautiful, right? So it was a really, I loved our relationship. And also I felt there was a lot of healing that he could have done in my energy that he was not feeling safe to you know like basically I could sense stuff about him that could have the opportunity to heal and I was tr doing my best to create a safe space and he just like wouldn't open up I know he did the best he could I'm not I'm not like saying anything negative about him it was just more of this frustration that I wanted to be there for him I, w I wanted to be the safe space and he just didn't feel safe to drop into it you know um, and it got to the point where I just couldn't, I couldn't be in that energy anymore. Like I needed to be with people who are actively able to transmute their trauma into something that is going to heal the world. Um, but anyway, so we broke up and it took me about two years to, I thought this person was like, he was the first person that I ever was like, this could be my person, you know, like. And we were like building our new earth community together. We wanted to have kids together. Like just, I just loved him so much. I might cry right now. <laughs> I really loved him. I still do. <laughs> and it still really hurts me. Cause like after we broke up, he blocked me on everything and still is blocked to this day for reasons unknown. <laughs> I talked to one of our mutual really good friends, my friend Isa is good friends with both of us. And she was also raised Jehovah's Witness. And she was just saying, I think he just needs time and space because that's his way of processing because he doesn't have any other emotional tools. And it's like so painful for him to break up with you. Anyway, so like a year later, um, like we started the collective together, the remote collective. And a year later, I was like going through one of the drawers after we broke up and I found this journal and I didn't know what it was. So I opened it and it was a shadow work journal. So if you don't know what shadow work is, shadow work is like when you go into the things that are, um, that you feel insecure about yourself and the things that like you want to work on about yourself, this is your shadow work. This is the, you know, like all of us want to be in the love and light and spirituality, but like if you don't integrate your shadows, if you don't integrate the darkness or the things that are your traumas, the things that you don't have healed yet, they're going to keep coming back up and they're going to keep looping, right? So he had been doing a year of shadow work, like where he was consciously working on the things that he needed to heal and his insecurities and all this stuff. And he'd been writing it down in a journal. He'd been doing this the year before we started dating because we were friends for like a year before we dated. And it, it's dated on the journal, right? So <laughs> all of the things that were written in there were like things that I found out slowly through our relationship, but that he never brought up with me. So he was conscious of all of these traumas, all of these like uh, insecurities, all of these like dynamics that he come loops in his relationships because of his trauma. He had written them down in this journal before we started dating and he had never spoken to me about them. And I'm not saying that he, it was his responsibility to, but I also am saying that we, we could have healed this together. We could have been a team on this together, you know? And a lot of those things I found out through 
a lot of disconnection between us. Like he would get triggered by something and then shut down and then not talk to me for three days. And I would just be like trying to figure out what's going on and trying to like heal the thing. And I don't even know what the thing is. And then in his journal, it's saying the thing, you know, I'm like, what the fuck? So anyways, I messaged him and was like, do you want this journal? And he said, yeah. And so he came and picked it up and we never talked about it again. Like he just didn't want to talk to me. Um, but what I realized from that, I was like, wow, if all of us, this is my invitation for all of you. It's like, if all of us chose to sit down and write out the things that we're actually insecure about, we like make this little shadow work book for ourselves and all the things, our traumas and the things that we're like insecure about. And like, we, we're, we don't know if we're good enough. We don't know if we're worthy. We don't like our bodies in this certain way where we have this specific trauma that keeps showing up in relationships. And then when we get in a relationship with someone new, we like hand them this journal and we're like, Hey, this is my thing. Like, or we're like, once the person has earned the right to our trust and we know we want to be in a partnership with them. What if we like exchange these shadow work journals and we're just like, these are the things I'm working on. Like, can we do this as a team? Like, how can we support each other in our journeys? Oh my God. That that makes me so excited like I'm like because for me it's like it's not about having trauma it's like can we stay connected while we're healing our trauma can we do it together as a team can this be an opportunity for us to connect deeper and I really believe that everything is an opportunity for us to connect deeper and instead of like projecting it onto your partner and like starting the loop over with them, why don't you just consciously talk about it? And then it's like, when it comes up, it's like, oh yeah, this is your trauma thing. Okay. So instead of like, if he had said this to me, instead of me reacting to him, like shutting down and not talking to me for three days for things I didn't understand, I would be able to know because I'd read in the journal, like if he had given it to me, oh, this is the thing. So he's just reacting. Okay. So I just need to like support him. And this is not about me. I didn't do anything wrong. There's, there's, we're not going to break up. It's just him handling his trauma. Oh, let me see if I can be the high priestess right now and give him some emotional tools and give him some nurturing and some love and like respond to him with love instead of being cold back to him because I don't understand what's going on and now I'm getting reactive and now I'm getting triggered. That could change the world. Just putting that out there. <laughs> um, so a lot of you women are asking like, how do we step into high priestess energy? Like, how do we get connected to our bodies? And this is something I was talking to one of my girlfriends about in Washington. And I was like, whoa, like as women, our biggest opportunity for growth right now is to create a connection to our bodies because our bodies are the source, our connection to our bodies and our intuitive, like the intuitive things, um, words, when our, your body is telling you something intuitively, like through the whispers of your soul or actually how things are showing up in your body, it's speaking to you. It's your soul talking to you. And when we are able to understand it and listen to it and get the downloads from what's happening in our body and how they're directly affecting what's happening, a connection to what's happening in our lives, this is us being the high priestess. So, and when you look at also why is this so important when you look historically like women were literally burned at the stake for being in connection to their body like women who were able to and also in connection to the earth like women back in the day that could go out and pick herbs and make remedies and like look at someone's body and track what's happening and tell them what they need to change in their life because your body shows what's happening in your life like there's a way to this is what somatic experiencing is it's like literally able to recognize the sensations and the things that are happening in your body and tell you what's happening in your life and this is high priestess shit and like this is what men were burning women for they were literally killing them for their connection to their body and their connection to spirit which is nature which is us listening to our intuitive force that's coming through our body and and also understanding the rhythms of our body and the rhythms of the earth. All of this is high priestess energy. All of this is witchy stuff that is going to heal the collective if we're able to reconnect to it. Um, and this is us as women. This is our source of power. So if you're a woman, you're like, how do I empower myself? How do I step into my power? How do I know what I'm supposed to do in my life? First step, connect your body. Make a relationship with your body as if you're in a relationship with your partner. Your body is your first relationship. Nurture your body, take care of your body, listen to your body. If you're like, 
how do I listen to my body? <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means. I'm so disconnected. I don't understand where to begin. I understand. I honor that. It's okay. A lot of you are in the same boat in the situation. A lot of you are feeling the same way. Um, I actually had a woman reach out to me, one of the f you lovely uh, soul family on Instagram who follow me. She was asking this very same thing. Like a lot of people ask me, um, it seems like Brittany, you've been able to have a very strong connection to your body. Like how, how can I do this for myself? So I gave her an affirmation that I'm going to share with you. And I invite you to write this down. I invite you to say this to yourself in the morning, at night, or anytime you feel disconnected from your body. The affirmation, this is for men and women. The affirmation is I love my body and my body loves me. I take care of my body and my body takes care of me. I live in a healthy and happy body. So I'll say it again. I love my body and my body loves me. I take care of my body and my body takes care of me. I live in a healthy and happy body. So the more that you say this, the more your subconscious will be activated to come into alignment with that affirmation. So even if you feel out of alignment with your connection with your body, even if you feel disconnected from your body right now, just by saying this as an affirmation, things will start shifting in your life. You'll start paying attention to things. You'll start being like, is this me taking care of my body when I go to the gym? When I eat this thing, is this me taking care of my body or is this not me taking care of my body? You know, like you're still going to start paying attention to it and you're going to come into alignment. Um, I've also had some of you like ask me like, do you have an eating disorder or have you ever had an eating disorder? And I've shared this in a past podcast, but yeah, growing up, I uh, was anorexic when I was in high school. And when I look back on it, it was literally my body saying, I feel unsafe. I feel frozen. I was in a very abusive situation with my dad, an abusive situation with the religion. I just felt very unsafe in the world. And the way that showed up in my body was I would get so nervous to the point where when I would eat food, I would feel nauseous and I would almost want to puke. So my reaction to that was to just not eat food. And then I started fainting everywhere and getting super skinny. And my best friend, Christina, uh, that I went through all of high school with, like I've known her since I was like nine, um, she would like <laughs> force feed me. She'd be like, you need to eat. You need to eat. I don't see you eat today. You need to eat. So these are the people that love you, that really take care of you, you know? But the, the baseline was that my body was sending an alarm signal that I didn't feel safe in my body. I wasn't in a safe situation. So uh, I've actually helped women to work through some of their um, things around anorexia by just asking a simple question. Do you feel safe in your body, in your life? If you're dealing with anorexia right now, I invite you to look at the areas in your life where you feel unsafe. This could be something with your family. This could be your living situation. This could be a life situation. And start aligning your life so that you start feeling safe in all these different areas. Um, another way that I've, like this has shown up in my body, I'm just giving you some examples, is um, so... The right side of your body is your masculine side and the left side of your body is your feminine side. And so if you, this is again a high priestess witchy thing, but this is like, a, this is, they're starting to prove this scientifically, that if you hurt yourself on your right side of your body, this is something to do either with masculine energy in your life. It could be the men in your life or some sort of masculine energy, or it's your own masculine energy is out of alignment. So Masculine energy is energy you give out in the world. So sometimes how it shows up for me is if I'm giving too much and I'm not taking care of myself, I'm not resting enough, my right side, my right um, side of my shoulder will just start aching. I'll just suddenly start having like a really bad pain in like my neck and my shoulder. And I st stop and I'm like, okay, where am I over giving? Or it has been times where I'm in a situation with a man and I don't feel safe. And I feel that the energy that is coming towards me in the masculine is not energy that I want to receive. And just to balance out what I said about the feminine. So like the feminine side of your body is um, either something to do with your feminine energy or it's um, the feminine energy that you're giving in the world, like that you're, that you're receiving from the world. So Basically, if you hurt yourself on your right side, something to do with masculine energy. If you hurt yourself on your left side, something to do with feminine energy. I'll just leave you there. There's so much more I could say about that. And some of you are asking me where to learn about this. And I can't think of something right now. This is just stuff that I've intuitively downloaded and also like 
learned through other high priestesses around the world that I'm in contact with. If you know of where to find out more about this right side, left side, how, like the somatic mapping, actually, I can ask my friend Moni. She literally has a somatic institute for women. I'm going to research this and see if I can find some more information for you. But also, if you know this information right away, can you message it to me? That would be really great so I can share it with the rest of you. Um, okay. Some of the last things I want to say is like, you know, a lot of people joke about trauma bonding, like that this is a super negative thing. Like, oh, I just trauma bonded with this guy. You know, like they're trying to avoid. So like your first relationship is the relationship. Your first love of your life is the, your first uh, caretakers that are the masculine and feminine. So whether it's your parents or whoever raised you in the fa masculine and feminine energy. So for me, my parents. So the first love of my life in the masculine was my father like this is my role model for how men are in the world this is my relationship to men is my relation my first relationship with him and this is the same for you right so as an adult I would run away from men who vibrationally reminded me of my father I was just like I do not want to deal with any of this energy and a lot of that is very healthy right but also what would start happening is I would get into a relationship with someone that on the surface was nothing like my father and then there would be energy that would come up in the relationship and sometimes I wonder if I even activated this energy and what I'm trying to say is that this is not a bad thing we as a society have a lot of shaming or guilting around oh she you know she was abused by her dad growing up so now she's in an abusive relationship and what I want to tell you is that this is actually a very natural thing that all of us humans do is that when you experience trauma, the way that you heal trauma, so like when you experience trauma, your body is programmed to believe that this energy or this situation is going to lead to something that hurts me. So I want to, one, like on the surface, co consciously you want to completely avoid that person, that situation, people who remind you of that person, all the things. On a subconscious level, your body actually wants to heal. So your body attracts in people, situations, energy, that is close enough to the trauma that you experienced grow growing up, but isn't as hardcore usually, so that you can have in your lived experience, in your body, a positive solution to the outcome. So then it can prove to your body that it's actually safe. These people are safe, this energy is safe, I'm safe in my body. You're craving safety in whatever way. And so if you keep attracting in people that remind you of someone that abused you or your father or your mother or whatever, whatever, this is not a negative thing. This is what we all do. All of us are doing this. We're doing this loop. And when you consciously realize the loop and you realize, oh, this person is trying to heal themselves. This per I'm trying to heal myself. We're all trying to heal ourselves. You can work together as a team. To be like, oh, so in this moment, I just want you to know you remind me of my dad and this is really triggering for me, but also this is an opportunity for me to heal this. Can we heal this together? Most of the time, we're not conscious, even myself, in those moments because we're just so triggered that our survival mode kicks in and you literally do not have uh, frontal, what is it, prefrontal cortex? Like it's just, it gets shut down and like your lizard brain comes up and you're just like, I need to get out of the situation or I need, it's like the fight or flight, you know? But when you have emotional tools, and you slow down and you do your breath work in the morning, your meditation and your journaling and you're like, you know, tapped in, turned on, switched on, whatever Abraham Hicks says, like all the things you're like connected to source, you're feeling safe. And then you're consciously going into these relationships saying to yourself, I know this is an opportunity to heal. Of course, this is an opportunity to connect. I love this person. Like I'm talking about healthy relationships, you know, where you consciously on the surface are like, this is a healthy relationship, but there are some unhealthy dynamics that are coming up. It's, it's very easy to like blame the person. I can go through and try and blame my past partners for all these unhealthy energies or dynamics that were playing out. And also I have to take responsibility that I attracted those in. And some of them I might've even activated because I, cho I was really hoping, this is all subconscious again. I take ownership that I was doing it subconsciously, but I want you to know that I really was just, I think we all wanna live in peace and harmony and love and connection. And also we wanna heal. We wanna be a complete person and you're not a complete person until you heal your core traumas. And so until you heal your core traumas, consciously or subconsciously, mostly subconsciously, you're gonna keep looping because you're trying to have your body have a positive outcome to something that reminds you of the trauma. 
And so that your body can finally say it's safe. I can drop in. I can be fully present in this moment. I can allow myself to receive this love and fully give it back. So I'm sharing this with you because I want you to be able to, if all of us were looking at all of this as like, how can we be a team on this? And we can like support each other to heal our trauma. One, it can be a lot more connection and love in the world. And also it can just feel way more fun. We can do it together. It can be fun. We can heal our trauma. It just this whole modality that like healing needs to be painful. I don't agree with that. I feel like healing can feel all of the emotions, yeah, it can also feel pain, but you can feel connected all the way through. You can feel supported. You can feel loved all the way through. It can be an opportunity for deeper connection with the people that you currently love in your life and that deserve to witness and hold space for your story. <sighs> so I think that's it for now. <laughs> We're going to take mushrooms today. So, um, I know that was a lot and also I just want to update you like how LA is going. LA is going great. I've only been here, f I've been here two nights. I got here like Tuesday night and last night we went out and partied and it was really beautiful. I met a lot of amazing people. I met up with a girlfriend yesterday. We walked around, we went shopping and got boba tea. It's really funny because boba is like from Asia and I just only am like getting into it here in the States, which I find hilarious. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of beautiful people I'm meeting this week, um, a lot of connections. And L.A. is the first place in the States where I could see myself being here longer, like coming back and staying for periods of time. I think for me, Copenhagen will always be my home base. And also, you know, I'm here to play the game of life and make the most impact in the world that I can while having the most fun with all my favorite people. And I'll have a lot of fa favorite people. I have a lot of beautiful people here in L.A. that I love. And I'm excited to come back and spend more time with them and co-create and, um, and also play the game of life here in L.A., you know? Maybe you'll see me on a movie soon. <laughs> Everything's possible. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go. It's starting to get windy. And, yeah, so much activation. Basically, let's just do our best to be conscious and to work together as a team to heal everything that we need to heal. And I have some ideas around creating some high priestess like containers to activate this energy in us women to hold these safe containers for men and for each other. Because I, I really believe first it needs to happen with us women holding the container for each other and like creating this vibrational bubble of safety and like power and that's also why my play parties are, it's like a first step in that. I feel like activates a lot of women into their high priestess mode because our connection to our sexual power is also a huge part of being a high priestess because it's our connection to our body. Um, and also I think maybe I'll organize some courses or some retreats to just like educate and activate and connect more. So if that's something you're interested in, like please reach out to me. Um, and I have a course still that's going this month. It's going really well. We have so many amazing women and men in there. And I'm still doing human design readings. I'm going back to Thailand on the 30th. I actually lose a whole day in the air. So I get back to, uh, I actually get to Asia on the 2nd. I get to Thailand on the 2nd uh, of October. But I'm going to start doing a lot more human design readings. So if you're interested in that, uh, reach out and we can book them. And yeah, so many amazing things. I'm going to go on to my next adventure, but I wanted to update you and activate you and send you all this love. And I will see you in the next episode. Bye.